come true. The New York native hardly spoke a word of Greek a few years ago and went on to win Greece's most popular music reality show, Fame Story. She became an overnight sensation in the country of her parents' birth. Last year, she represented Greece in the Eurovision Song Contest and captured the hearts and minds of millions of Europeans with her song, Secret Combination. Here to present the Gabby Award for Arts and Culture, Kavo Mira. so many people that I admire that are here, uh, which I want to take pictures of later, just so you know. Um, and that's it, I just want to say thank you to all of you for inspiring us and for giving us the guts and the drive to really go after our dreams. So I just want to say thank you. Um, I'd like to remind the audience to hold your applause until all the nominees have been introduced. I'm sorry, I have to say that. Okay. And the nominees for the Gap Award for Arts and Culture are Colonel Matthew Bogdanos. He led the investigation into the looting of Iraq's National Museum and was awarded the National Humanities Medal by President George W. Bush. <laughs> He's the author of See the Baghdad, a first-hand account of his experience. Kat Flora, she made television history as the Food Network's first and only female to win the Iron Chef competition. She is Bon Appetit Magazine's Teacher of the Year and Executive Chef. Despite being eight months pregnant, she's here with us and also busy planning her new Greek restaurant in Disney World, which opens later this summer. <laughs> Christine Gondonio. She is the curator of Greek and Roman art at the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston and one of the world's experts on Greek antiquities. She has authored several books and curates one of the finest collections of Greek antiquities in the world. <laughs> Harry Mark Petrakis. He is, uh, sorry, he is an award-winning author of over two dozen celebrated novels. He has been called one of our nation's finest writers by the New York Times. At 85 years young, he just completed The Shepherds of Shadows, a powerful book which tells the story of the Greek Revolution of 1821. <laughs> Michael Tsiakis, he was named Bon Appetit Magazine's Chef of the Year. His New York City restaurant, Anthos, is one of the only two Greek restaurants in the world with a Michelin star. A few months ago, he cooked for the president at the White House gathering for Greek Independence Day. <laughs> and George Stephanopoulos, he kept himself busy during the election season, interviewing every major Republican and Democrat candidate during the primary election cycle. He's the chief Washington correspondent for ABC News and anchor of ABC's political affairs programs this week with George Stephanopoulos. And the Gabby Award goes to Harry Mark Since I have spent the last 45 years not only writing but talking, it's difficult to stop me unless you hit me in the mouth. <laughs> when I considered that I might be the winner in this category, I became apprehensive. Too much praise in a man's lifetime leaves nothing for his eulogy. <laughs> But then I was humbled 
when I considered that the reason I was chosen was simply because I am the oldest. <laughs> you know, give it to the old guy. He's on God's short list of visits. <laughs> he may never have another chance. <laughs> but any recognition by one's peers and readers is an honor, and I accept with gratitude. I have many things to be grateful for. I am grateful that in a world where the moment we are born we are old enough to die, to have lived eight and a half decades, and to still have beside me a white Dimitra who will be married, we will be married this September if we make it 64 years. Of course, I was 12 when we were married. <laughs> but the truth is that after that span of time together, if one inhales in one room, the other exhales in the other. But I also can be grateful to parents to have been born the son of a poor parish priest and his pedritera, who came to this country in 1916 with four of my older brothers and sisters to minister to the community of young Cretan coal miners. They instilled in me as a child a nostalgia for Crete that haunted me. And when I visited Crete for the first time in the outpouring of love from my relatives, I recognized and felt I had truly come home. Now I'm also grateful for the rich tradition of Greek literature and art bequeathed to us that I have so often drawn upon as inspiration in my work. Not merely from the great classical period of Greece, but I'm speaking of the poets and novelists of the last hundred years. Stop for a moment and realize that small nation of 10 million people has produced two Nobel Prize laureates. Georgios Sifiriadis and Odysseus Silitis, and two other giants who should have won, the great Cretan Nikos Gazanzaitis and Pandelis Karvalaitis. <laughs> and so many others, Yanis Uritsos, Angelos Sikilianos, Konstantin Kavafi, they provide us not only an understanding of the Hellenic world, of the soul and the landscape of Greece, but insight into the frailties and strengths of human beings. In the world to come, they will not reprimand you if you have not read Petrakis. Although if you haven't tried one book, you might make a sense. <laughs> but they will sternly scold you if you have not read these giants of our heritage. Thank you.